I'm Hector Armienta. I'm the composer and librettist for Zorro, which is being premiered by Fort Worth Opera in January. And I'm thrilled to be uh, joined by the wonderful uh, national and international mezzo-soprano star, Kirsten Chavez. Hello, Kirsten. Hello, Hector. Muchas Hello. gracias. I'm so happy to be here with you. Yeah, an absolute pleasure. So uh, Kirsten and I have a little bit of history. Um, she starred as Ultima in um, one of my last works, Bless Me Ultima, which was um, produced by Opera, uh, Opera Southwest, commissioned by them, as well as my company, Opera Cultura. But, and Kirsten, if you hadn't seen Bless Me Ultima, she was fabulous. So I am thrilled beyond belief to have her sing one of the main roles um, in Zorro. So welcome, Kirsten. Thank you. Thank you, Hector. January is going to be awesome. going to be awesome, yes. Okay, so let me, let's start off a little bit. Um, uh, let's start off and uh, tell me a little bit how um, you started as an opera singer. Well, my father was a singer. He was a, an expert in Spanish American folk music and he recorded a few albums and taught me these Spanish songs when I was very young. Um, I thought I would be a musical theater singer until I got to do uh, my bachelor's degree in New Mexico. And that was when I heard my first opera and I was like, oh my gosh, I wanna do that. Uh, it's pretty much the hardest thing I could think of to do with my life. It has been, and it yeah. has been immensely rewarding. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a passion to sing. Yes, opera. yes. Yeah. So, um, and I um, saw on your resume that you, uh, you've sung, you know, both nationally, internationally. Um, you were at the Met, I believe, was it last year or the year? Uh, no, two, two years ago two, now, two, yeah. yeah. Before the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. And how exciting that was, how exciting that was for you. Um, so let's, let's start right away um, with the next question I have for you. Um, so you are singing the, uh, the role of Carlota. Carlota. Uh, what are your, uh, and that's interesting, you know, I'll tell you a little bit. Um, when I originally, originally was working on the libretto, um, I didn't envision Carlota playing such a significant role in the opera, but it really is an important role in terms of the narrative and the story. Um, so I, what you I feel that. Yeah, I feel that, Hector, and I and I'm I'm I love her. I love the fact that she is very driven by love, and that her love is unconditional. Um, the love that she feels for Zorro is uh, eternal, and you know she basically sacrifices herself um, for his sake and for the sake of the person that he loves now. Um, and I uh, that resonates very strongly with me personally. Um, because I think, you know, nothing is more important in this world than love. And to me, she symbolizes that. Yeah, yeah. And, and just a little bit, you know, when I wrote the role, or when I think about it, a little bit of the backstory is that when Diego, as a young man, goes to Spain, um, right. he this, you know, he's, you know, he's very young, right? His father sends him to Spain to go to the military academy before he returns back to Los Angeles. Right. Right? Right. And he's in Sevilla. Yeah. And he meets this wonderful woman who he has an, a love affair with. Yes. Um, yeah, a very passionate love affair. But yeah. then it doesn't, um, well, why don't you share a little bit about not, the, not what happens at the end, but just terms of what happens when you return, the character Carlota returns to Los Angeles and meets um, Diego. Well, you know, I, I, I feel like it's, I, I, I'm, uh, really delighted to see him. I think that I harbor a, a certain amount of hope that maybe there's something still between us. Um, and uh, that that's very evident in the way I'm expressing myself and the way I um, am trying to include him in, in current activities. Um, but it, it becomes clear fairly early on that, that he's enamored with someone else. Yeah. Um, and that's hard to take, but <laughs> it's yeah. opera, so. <laughs> yeah, and that's Ana Maria. Yes, Ana, Ana Maria, Maria, exactly. His childhood, his childhood friend. So it's going to be an interesting dynamic, um, yeah. you know, between what I'm thinking just in terms of also um, having these, these voices, you know, um, you're the mezzo and Ana Maria is the, the soprano. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, typical sort of cast. You know? <laughs> Standard <laughs> yeah. opera conventions. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's yes. the right term. But um, it's going to be very interesting. And it's a very powerful. Uh, well, we won't go into details because we don't want to give that away. Right. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, okay. So my next question 
Um, how would you how would you describe the music in Zorro? What I'm and I'm thinking specifically your music. Yeah, yeah, I love. Okay, I I absolutely love it. And and you know when I was asked to participate in Zorro, I mean I didn't. There was no thinking. There was no negotiating. It was just absolutely because I knew Hector that you were the composer. And right. having spent our time on Bless Me Ultima. Uh, I knew even before I saw the score that I was going to absolutely love it. And, and I do, I absolutely do. It's so lush, you know, it's, it's a very romantic sound to me. Um, the harmonies are, are inventive um, and, and just very rich, I find. Um, modern and yet, you know, tapping into even some of the romantic era type of, of harmonies. But I also particularly love the references to uh, Spanish uh, uh, rhythms and ornaments um, that are that they're so prevalent um, in my role, certainly. And uh, that that very much speaks to me, you know. Um, having done Carmen many times, uh, I live in that Spanish you're, you're classical. Famous. It's yeah. it's what I love to do, and uh, it's. It, it, there's a very unique flavor uh, of that Spanish music within the classical realm um, that I think you capture so beautifully. And there are a number of references in my uh, music to uh, specific rhythm types, specific dance types, and um, very there's a there's a very big folk element, which of course was also present in Bless Me Ultima, mm -hmm. although that was a very specific New Mexican flavor, which was so wonderful. Um, also, of course, derived from Spain, but these are, are more directly Spanish, which is, is thrilling to me. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to just mention that, you know, uh, for those of you who have, have not had the joy of hearing or seeing uh, Kirsten, she is recognized as one of the foremost singers uh, for Carmen. So, so um, when I when I learned that you were gonna sing um, Carlota, I thought, what amazing <laughs> casting, perfect. Oh, perfect. thank you, yeah, thank you. I'm overjoyed. Yeah, absolutely, please. And I would say, you know, Diego definitely has um, Spanish motifs. Um, you know, there's he has different ones depending upon English, but there's two or three. I would say two, two definitely that are that represent his character and mood. Um, but your character, I think, because, you know, the, the idea is that you are from Sevilla, you mm -hmm. really capture, your character really captures the Spanish flavor culturally and musically. And yours is, when I wrote the music for your character, uh, I did everything I could to make sure that it was as authentic as possible. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it and, really comes uh, across. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And there is one that I think will be really interesting for you. Um, and you're, I know you're saying it now, but it's the uh, piece called El Zorro, which is a Spanish buleria. Oh. Um, it's the one that you sing. Yeah, the one that I'm referencing in my, in my, in, in the, in the party. Is it the one? Yes, I'm yes. Yeah, the, yeah, okay. The, the masquerade party. And um, I, you know, I, you know, as you probably know, I travel to Spain quite a bit. When yes. I can, it's like I love you know Barcelona is my favorite. Oh but, yeah. Uh, but uh, when I was writing that piece, uh, it took me quite a while because, and I, I want to say that I co-wrote it because initially I was going to do it by myself, but it was just too challenging, so I wrote it co-wrote it with someone else. Um, and it is a buleria which is counts in twelve, and, wow. the, and all of that syncopation, I was just you know. Uh, you know, studying with a couple of people on how to write it. I was watching videos, you know, all that rhythm. So, yeah, so I'm really excited to oh. hear you sing that. Oh, Hector. Yeah. It's yeah. such a joy. I can't even tell you. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. I hope you'll be very happy. Oh, I'm sure I will be. I'm sure I will be. Um, so, okay, so my last question, um, you know, when you, if you were to tell someone, who doesn't know, know Zorro, the story, or um, what, what would you tell them about why they should come to see this production? Wow, I think there are a lot of reasons for that. And, and I mean, being a romantic myself, <laughs> I'd say that's a big reason uh, because the, the, it's not really, I guess, a love triangle that's happening, but a little bit in some ways, um, given that I still have such strong feelings for Diego and he's 
interested in someone else. Um, but so there's that romantic story. There's also a bit of a villain happening, which is always fun. Of course, the low man, the baritone, the bass baritone is always the bad guy. Yeah. Um, and we have a good bad guy uh, in this piece. So that's exciting. And I, I just, I think that the that people are going to be absolutely enamored of the music, Hector, if I may say that. Oh, I, I really, um, you know, there's such, there's such a desire for um, modern opera composers who can take stories that we know and bring them to life in, on the stage with, you know, the, within this classical realm, but in a way that's accessible for, everybody and I think that you capture that so beautifully um you know for me personally I I'm a big uh proponent of modern opera I've done quite a few of them in my career and I I will continue to do so I think it's very important but I always struggle when uh some of the pieces that I've done seem to lack the the sense of melody mm. um for me melody is critical Melody is indispensable. It must be there because that is what people attach to at that subliminal level, that subconscious level. Uh, they react to melody, that, that, that's where their emotions ride. And I, as a singer, relish beautiful melody. And I know that my listeners do as well. And I think that you've captured that very beautifully, Hector. So I think oh, for, the, for the power of the story, um, with the love uh, between various characters and the, the, uh, the antagonist who comes and tries to break everybody up, <laughs> and then the lush, beautiful, melodic music. I think there's plenty of reason to come and enjoy this really great story that many of us have heard of, but maybe don't know quite as well. So yeah, we'll get to yeah. dig in. Yeah, and um, also I'll just share with you that that uh, one of my uh, my great loves in terms of a novelist is uh, Isabel Allende. And I love how she, she creates these stories and draws on history. So many of the references in Zorro, um, it's set in 1814, during the time of great political turmoil in Spain. And so it, that's sort of the, the historical and narrative background um, fight for justice. So it's gonna, I think people will really like it. I'm yeah. hoping so. <laughs> I know they will. I have zero doubt. Uh, thank you, Kristen. Well, it's, it's been a joy and thank you everybody for taking the time to, um, to, uh, view, to watch this video and meet one of the amazing stars that will be, be performing in um, Fort, Worth's, uh, Fort Worth Opera's production of Zorro in January. Mm -hmm.